digital photography, it doesn't just exist in the camera. You have to put it somewhere. You have to maybe edit, manipulate a little bit. What are some programs people could look at, uh, again, starting out? Well, like I say, it really kind of depends on how, how deep you want to dive. There are, you know, I, I spend just as much time, if not more time, actually probably way more time on the editing side than I do, you know, actually taking photos. Uh, so there's a whole... There's a whole lot to talk about on that end as far as uh, what we call digital asset management. So you're saving all these photos. Like my damn my yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, my my image my image archive uh, you know is redundant, so I have multiple versions of it. But it's probably I haven't looked at it lately. Somewhere probably north of a million photos, seven hundred thousand to a million photos. Wow. This is ten plus years of you know photing photographing daily, weekly. So. Storing all those images is a lot. Uh, you're not most people aren't going to be storing that much, but it's something to think about. There's a lot of great uh, services too, like using things like Google Photos and Amazon uh, Photos, what to automatically store or, or give you places online that you can kind of keep your stuff safe. You know, additional hard drives, that kind of stuff. But as far as the software goes, uh, there are great stuff. Like Adobe is what I use. You know, there's a lot of Lightroom, Photoshop, that kind of stuff to do everything from storing and archiving to touching up to making digital manipulations. There are, I, you know, I could talk all day about that kind of stuff, but. And Adobe, their suite right now is free for two months, like is there, a trial? There, yeah, I think, I think because of the uh, coronavirus, they're right, and it may just be for students, I'm not exactly sure. I think that they're offering like two months for free. I, don't quote me on yeah. that. Yeah, look into it. There are, uh, there are other ones, if you don't want to pay for Adobe, there are other options as far as the programs that they offer. There's free alternatives to some of that stuff, and they, a lot of them work pretty well. There's one I, I will, when if, if I'm in a crunch somewhere and I don't have my software in front of me, there's one called Photo P, if I can find it. which is basically just a online browser version of Photoshop. And it works pretty similarly oh, to, wow. to what you're gonna get in, in the desktop application. It's good for, in a crunch, it'll read Photoshop files, do layered documents, all that kind of stuff. And it's just a browser-based uh, piece of software. Wow, yeah, that looks real similar. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, yeah. And so are there, real basic things, like someone when they're first starting out, things to think about with editing software, just to get their vision across the most. Things like, you know, setting your levels or, or being able to play with exposure, it'll help you learn a little bit more about how your camera sees, how your computer sees, how that information gets interpreted. To do really simple things like make a photo black and white. To more complex things, you know, on the creative side, I'll do a lot of what we call digital illustration. So a lot of these are composited images. There are several photos that are put together. So let's find a good example here. Um, well, I like this one. This is a friend of mine <laughs> and his his son came by the studio, his son and his daughter, I just took a picture of him jumping up in the air and then for fun just kind of photoshopped it into this scene. And then there's his daughter, same thing, just uh, took a, a random photo of her jumping up on one of the sets I had built and then added all of the background and text and everything uh, to, You know, this is a this is a composited image. Each of these people were photographed separately and then put together in a big group. To stitching photos together, so like these panoramas. So this is probably eight or nine photos shot in sequence and then stitched together in the computer, kind of like your your iPhone will do when you do a pano. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a similar concept, although you're taking chunks of photos. So. The, the software is really powerful and there's a lot of stuff you can do with it, so really the best way is to find a piece of software that you think works for you and then go find tutorials online because there's, there's, you can learn at any level 
with free stuff online. Mm -hmm. Free stuff. Free stuff. And, and so it's real similar to like when you're starting out with the equipment, mm -hmm. you can do very basic things and then as you're using it, as you're getting those repetitions yeah. and you're learning, you can push it further if, and further. If you, if you run out and buy the Adobe Suite and open up Photoshop, it's going to be probably pretty pretty overwhelming or confusing because the, the software is, it built slowly over time. Uh, I think so. I started with Photoshop too. Yeah. Yeah. Very, I think I started on like version four or something like uh -huh. that in, in the nineties. Yeah, and it wasn't a it, it's you know because that's what it looks like. You pull it up and it's just <laughs> it's some tools and a and a gray space. Right. So, not knowing not not being familiar with this, it can be it can be kind of a lot to try and take on. So, you know, just starting out with basic tutorials. You know, the Adobe site has a lot of that stuff, but you don't have to use the Adobe software. There's there's other stuff that'll get the job done. From real simple ones that are just sliders that you move up and down, color saturation, exposure, to you know more powerful software like this. Mm -hmm.